Well, thanks for coming. I'll answer any questions for you guys. Go ahead. Front row, Dave. Urban, if something happened to JT Barrett um, and Joe Burrow had to go in the game, um, what's something right now you feel like he is competent at, very good at, maybe something he really needs to work at? He's pretty good. I don't think he's quite the athlete that uh, JT is right now, but he's becoming a much better runner. His release is night and day what it was. Um, so I, I would uh, probably lean on the tailback and then, you know, high percentage passes. But he's getting, you know, he's getting close to being game ready. You guys have had a few scrimmages this spring. Is there one or two guys that have really stood out in every yeah. scrimmage? Yeah, the most improved guys right now are Sprinkle, or James Clark. Uh, James is really coming on. You know, it's about time too. Uh, but he's you know highly recruited guy with a lot of ability, and a good person. He's just uh, really taken this opportunity because, like I said, those four the four top guys. In theory, you know, they might not be the four top guys, but they're not practicing at all. And that's Dontre and uh, Curtis and JC, uh, Corey Smith and uh, Noah. And Noah looked really good out there today, running and doing stuff on the side. Uh, but James Clark's one of them. Draymond had his best day as a Buckeye today. Draymond, now once again, he's night and day from where he needs to be. A kid named Jay Sean had a good scrimmage that we're counting on. He's a little bit twitched up inside. We need to have him perform. And uh, Marcus Ball had a really good day today. Those are guys just off the top of my head. Back row middle, Steve. Yeah, Coach, uh, running back position out of the scrimmage on Saturday, who uh, out of that group, those three guys, you've talked pretty good about them so far in the spring, but who really seems to be kind of taking that step forward? Uh, we, we're, we're doing, we're pass heavy right now uh, on purpose. So I think once again, it's still Briante and uh, Mike are fighting it out. And the young guy's done a decent job. Uh, but he's not on the same level yet as uh, Mike and Briante. So Mike and Briante are still, no one's separated themselves yet. Front row, Bill. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk lately about the satellite camps. Could you give your opinion of, of the ban and how yeah, effective you know, it will have? I, I don't know. I, you know. I just hate to see. I, we, we, the biggest thing that, that I didn't realize that was part of it is that now the Mac schools can't come here. And I mean, Probably hundreds of scholarships have come out of here to those young players. And I know my son's getting recruited now a little bit. And you're like, what camps do you send them to? You know, not many kids can play at Ohio State. So don't send them or send them. And then, but now Bowling Green, they get a chance to watch him play. And uh, once again, there's no hit on, you know, when I was at Bowling Green, come to Ohio State's camp because you get to see all these players. So I didn't realize that was part of the conversation about not, I wish they'd revisit that part of it. You know, but once again, I think sometimes there's knee-jerk reaction because people complain and all that, and I, and I get it. I get that. You know, I think there's that's a slippery slope, but I'm not worried about the high, high-level players because they're going to find a way to get where they got to get. And I'm talking about there's a big chunk of players out there that deserve to play major college football, and um, I think they'll. Re I hope they revisit it. And I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I don't really know, but I just, if you always think first about players, just like someone told me they passed a texting rule. What, that's the most ignorant thing I've ever heard. You know, because they, they can't manage the coaches, they can't police the coaches. Okay, fire the coaches that do it. Fire them and make the penalty so absolute out of control that they won't do it. You'll never coach again in major college football if you on purpose text someone. Okay, move on to the next rule. But think about the student athlete first, and I think they need to revisit this because I did see some good stories. I read about the kid that would never got a shot to play, but he went to because he can't afford to can't. Everything's on the player's dime right now, so it's it's going to be interesting how they keep revisiting that. A different note. Uh, Tim Beck talked to us last week and talked about how it's night and day, the way he how comfortable he is this year versus last year. Could you evaluate how he did last year and, and what you see in this year? What, what yeah, he just was, okay. No, just okay. I, uh, that the, the, he took over for a very valuable guy, and, and just okay. I expect more out of him. And our, our offense staff, in general, I think we had to do better, have to do a better job than we did a year ago. Uh, I see it happening this spring, and um, uh, but I, I see a growth of a st offensive staff. Far right over here, Austin. Urban is, is Saturday and, and the spring game. Is it more important this year than some other years because of the youth? Sure. Year? Yeah, there's, that's obvious. The obvious answer is absolutely and. You know, the one thing that we're going to have, uh, it's, it's supposed to be great weather. I'm hoping we get 100,000 people. You know, to, uh, so that's another appeal to our fans to come on out. And this year, even more than last year, to see how some people, I want to see Joe Burrow perform in front of 100,000 people in the stadium. And I want to see Mike Weber perform in front of 100,000 people. They've never done it. 
uh, on the defensive line. How's Draymond going to perform in a nice, loud environment where things are going on and it's chaos? And so uh, I'm appealing to our fans to come out and support us for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's supposed to be a nice day. Come on out and watch your, watch your team play. We appreciate you coming out. And there's extremely, uh, uh, the value this year is greater than probably in our four years here to see how these young players respond. Schools that kind of phased out games and have done practices. Have you considered that at all in the past, or why oh, is yeah, the game just, Well, it's, you don't want it for the fan, uh, for us, number one, not the fans. But sometimes you get caught in those situations. And if, if it was twenty-two thousand, then yeah, just have a practice because it doesn't matter. In, in that stadium, you put twelve thousand people in there. Of course, just have a scrimmage because it doesn't matter. What's the difference between out there and? But we get that. There's nothing like performing in front of a hundred thousand people. And for me to watch, uh, watch that. So I have had that because you get injuries and you get depth issues. And we've played with uh, the offensive line for both sides was the same. They just kept changing jerseys because I didn't want to not have that opportunity to play in front of a huge crowd. Front row left, Mitch. You talked uh, last week about how JT was smarter than your staff. Um, could you talk about? I said that. Yeah. Not smarter than the head coach. <laughs> Okay. Uh, can you talk about his development and, and where he is today? Where you see him today? And yeah, as to, you know, well, last year he didn't have spring game, spring practice. Uh, the year before, I'm not sure he had it either. I don't know if has he ever had spring ball here. You'd have to go back in the archives and think he's never been the quarterback in spring practice. You know that for sure. So uh, he's having a great spring. It's not uh, we're we're changing some things on him. Uh, that uh, we felt fundamentally he wasn't where he needed to be last year for whatever reason. So it's, and the word twitch comes up with JT a lot. He's a fast player that we need him to play as fast as he can. And what happens when you play with receivers that don't know what they're doing, that sometimes we call it one bad rep is worth 100 good ones. And so if, that bot, if your body sees you have a bad rep because the receiver's too slow, he's not where he's supposed to be, you need 100 of those good reps to get your mind and body so when that happens in a game. So we're having them just, even if it's a bad receiver, throw the ball where you would throw it. And then I watch it. I actually watch a film with the quarterbacks, receivers, tight ends in this room because they're so young and saying where the ball should be. And I noticed in the last week it's been much better. So uh, he, he's, a, he's a valuable player for us, left obviously. Urban, your, your answer on the recruiting stuff was so interesting. It's, when, when the stuff came up with um, the travel for the families for the playoff, right? You had a very strong opinion on that. And things happened after that. How do you, I mean, you're a three-time national champion. You've been in the college game That's for why I ask. How do you try to balance when you are really trying to maybe facilitate change or versus, I mean, you're trying to run a team and run a program. You can't well, that doesn't get in the way of that other stuff. Right. I, I said the texting things are the most ignorant thing I've ever heard in my life. What can and you do? What can, like you're, what can keeps you telling you guys how ignorant it is. Okay. And, and then always appealing to people making decisions because it's hard. You know, if they're making a decision because of coaches are upset about it, that's not the point here. Put your, someone, put a student athlete on that same committee and say, what do you guys think? You know, student athletes, I don't know all these, you know, uh, I can start giving you names of committees and it's just another new committee, subcommittee this, subcommittee this, subcommittee. How many student athletes are on those? And ask them, what's your opinion of this? And listen to them. And if it's as strong as I saw where some kids are saying, I don't know, if you take away this camp, those are opportunities away from players. Well, but these coaches don't like it. So that's okay. Listen to the student athlete. What do they have to say about it? And I think we learned our lesson with the families getting to go. Of course, why do, my question is, why wasn't that done when they first brought up the college football playoff? So whoever has that checklist, number one, student athlete. Then all the other stuff about building facilities and salaries and if the commissioner's grandchildren get to go to the, the, the championship games or not, because they all do, right? But you tell me that the backup tight ends family can't go. It's just common sense, but why isn't that the number one thing? How does a student athlete feel about this rule? Do you really want text messages from 100 universities on your phone when you come off out of school? Do you, maybe the student athlete, I, the ones I know, what? No, I don't want to hear from these schools. But now you're going to get them. Some intern is going to be punching text messages on your phone, and you're going to get. And maybe you can block numbers and all that, but that's just too hard. Why? Because it's easier on coaches. 
or maybe it's easier for the enforcement because they just can't because people are doing it. I guess it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it's just weird. It's like the NCAA doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but most. And I think they're trying. This is not an anti NCAA thing. I understand that, but it's it's complicated stuff. But you're, again, you're we can do your voice. I would imagine even your voice. I think there's a few coaches out there. I probably agree with that. That we don't get asked a lot, you know, which I think is kind of curious too. And then a separate topic. You had mentioned Tracy Sprinkle as one of the guys who's really standing out this spring. For any guy who's had stuff off the field in the past, how do you? We know what happened with Tracy. How do you? It, when is a guy done with that and it's done? Is it always is it the question. back of your mind and he has to sort of? Like regain, how does he regain the trust of you and the staff and his teammates? Uh, just over time. You know, Marcus Ball is another one. There's guys that have issues and uh, they've grown. You know, sometimes they're 17, 18 year old issues. Sometimes they're character flaws. If we think it's a character flaw, then eventually we got to move them on. We try to change guys, but we don't, you know, I hear, but why did you keep that kid? Because we're trying to help change him. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, Tracy's grown out of that mess that he was in, and, and I found out exactly what happened that maybe people here don't know, but that's not important. So uh, they're on probationary status, and once they start moving away, but it's always going to be there. It's not you just forget it. And this university doesn't forget it either. So you got you got to, you know, uh, keep straight. Front row left, Lake. You, you and your staff have talked a good bit about uh, some of the early enrollees this spring, Austin Mack. Um, Michael Jordan, Antonio Williams. What have, have you seen? What you expected to see out of them this spring, and how anxious are you? To no, see they're much better. I made a, a point. Uh, one of the players came in the other day and said, "Do you really enjoy coaching?" And I said, "Yes." And then I go, "No." And then I go, "Yes." And then I go, "No." And then so I had an emergency team meeting, just about ten minutes after that, and it was. I just had a player ask me. And I, you know, I answered yes. I love coaching the good kid, good student, good guy that does everything right, Austin Mack. So we had four of them come in at uh, Michael, jo Michael Jordan, Austin Mack, uh, Jonathan Cooper, and Antonio Williams. The answer, how do you like coaching those guys? I love them. They're over three-point students. I don't know if they missed a class yet. And they do everything right. Then I can give you a list of names. No, I don't like coaching those guys. No, I, matter of fact, I have a hard time being around them. And we try to be honest with our players because we want everybody to be like that. So they're much more than we even thought they would be because you never know what you get. Because sometimes high school coaches and people tell you they're the greatest people in the world and you get here and they're not. So we try to change, but those kids are doing great. I put Malik Barrow into that too because he's really doing, but he's been hurt. And final questions, Tim? Uh, Urban, uh, how are you going to play the quarterback Saturday? Is JT going to play a lot? Will he be in the black jersey? I mean, yeah. just, if, I would think you've thought that through a little bit. Yeah, I think we'll let Steven and uh, Joe play a little bit live. I might bring the jerseys out to cover them up a little bit, but those guys have been live pretty much throughout the spring because that's a big part of who we are. How do they really, not who we are, how college football is, how good is that quarterback to escape pressure and all that. JT will play. Uh, how much to be determined. And really, we haven't even got there yet. We want to really have a good Monday and Wednesday. I'll let you know more later, later in the week. I kind of touched on this while ago, and I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't clear exactly what you said, but with the offensive line-wise, will you have two separate offensive lines, and, mm -hmm. and they'll have added? Yeah, well, I think we'll have enough for a full team. Once again, I, I, yeah. we'll give you that information after Wednesday. How much had you met or been around? I would think Will Smith was around maybe when y'all played down in New Orleans a couple of years ago and yeah. stuff. And just What was just your thoughts on him? I'm not sure how well you knew him, but just – what were your thoughts yesterday when you got the news and, and what that means? I mean, Luke Fickle sent me a text. Uh, Luke, Coach Fickle knows him as well as anybody. Uh, I believe I met him. You know, he's a very, it was a very unassuming, didn't expect the world to stop when he walked in, in the room. And, you know, I guess just wonderful guy and all that wonderful family. So we had a moment of silence and lifted up the family in prayer this morning. And, and uh, you're just tragic. And then, then we use it just like there's some legal issues across the country. So we spent the first 10 minutes of today's meeting talking about some issues that are going on in college football and then also, you know, press pause, you know, and then situations. And I don't know the whole situation, but you try to educate your, your team any chance you can. And last thing, are you going to, like, literally actively try to get that rule change that – Kent State Mac schools can be at your camp like they have been. They've been coming. We get through spring well. football, and then we yeah. might decide. But we got to get ready for Wednesday's practice, and I hope they reconsider it. I hope after an article, one of you guys does, maybe they'll call and ask our opinion.